Hello and welcome, my name is Neil Arts and this is another factorial of Angels mods. This time we're going to look into Smelting mod. This is a mod that we will be able to craft something as beautiful as this. I'm just going to start this machine because that's what we're going to come back to at the end. Now, what I want to show you is actually two things. There are two complicated things about the smelting, the smelting mod. The first, uh, first basic premise of this mod is basically this. You're taking ore and you're basically turning it into plates. So that's it. This whole mod replaces that little process with something huge and complicated and fun and efficient. That's the part because smelting mod is trading size. You can see this is very small with efficiency. So you can get much better yield. This yield is one to one. But if we start working on the first tier of the angels mod smelting, this is what we're looking at here. It will be much more productive. Now let's put 200 in just so we can feed the engine and let's have a look at what happens. So basically the, the first step of this process is that it takes four iron ore and generates 20, uh, 20, not 25, but just five iron ingots. This means at this point there is a 25% uh, gain and that is fed into an induction furnace, which basically takes three ingots in and melts them down into molten. Then it takes the molten over here, it takes two molten into two molten plates or into iron plates. So this is one to one, this is one to one, this increases yield by 25%. So this process here from ore to plates is a 25% increase in yield compared to the basic vanilla version. That's very good to know, but this is just the first step. So you can try this one and then know that you get 25% yield. However, you can see here, it takes a lot of space. So let's have a look at the other, the next tier of the process. I will also start this up with a seed of 200 iron ore. Now, the very first thing we do here is actually doing processing. So we process the iron into some granulate or something. And this is where we take four iron ore into one processed. Okay, so that's a reduction in per se. And over here we take one processed iron corresponding to five over iron ore and making it into six ingots. So in total from iron ore to here, we have a 50% increase in yield at the cost of another step of the process. This one is still constant, three in, three out. This one is constant, two in, two out. So this one will yield 300 at the end. Well, it gets better than that. So let's uh, take another step up the, the, the tier of, of complexity and look at the yields. Someone forgot to clean this out. Just want to make sure there's nothing in here that disrupts. There we go. We put 200 in and let's have a look at the first thing. Again, the first thing we do is processing. So that's uh, again, four iron ore into one process. The process here takes the next step where we take the process and make it into pellets. Well, in this case, we are actually getting 12 iron pellets out from two, proce from two processed iron. Two processed iron corresponds to iron two eight iron ore so at this level we are still from here from iron to the pellets we're having a 50 percent increase in yield and now the next step here adds another 20, 25 percent so going from iron pellets into iron ingots we get another 25 percent and that gives us a total of uh, from here to here 87.5 uh, percent increased yield and again the last two steps they are constant and that means from here the 200 in will give me something, <laughs> 370 out, when it gets down to it. But that's just, this is the mod in itself. You can see here, the ones I've been displaying is this process for the iron, but it exists for all the other ones. It should be noted that some are more advanced than the other. You can see up here, aluminum. It has an extra step because we first need to create alumina and then we need sodium hydroxide and then go onto the plates. Also down here where we have titanium and tungsten, they are significantly more complicated with extra steps in here. This is perfectly fine, this is to be expected. However, there is also the kink here that you can actually use it to produce steel. So that's what I've done up here. Let's just make sure that it's empty of everything, all 
everywhere so it doesn't uh, confuse us or at least confuse me so we're going to see this one with 200 again this process up to here is exactly the same so this is where we get uh, an 87.5 percent yield from the ore into the pellets now the pellets will then be the no sorry the ingots iron ingots iron ingots will then be put in and made into steel ingots by the addition of oxygen gas you're obviously oxygenating it it's actually strange wouldn't that rust the uh, iron don't know um i thought steel was actually uh, with carbon and not oh anyway maybe that's stainless steel in any case we now have three steel ingots so you have it basically that means that that from iron ore to steel uh, plates you have about a 94 percent conversion rate so it's basically it's almost one to one however if we compare that to this one about down here this is exactly the same as putting this one in and just taking these uh, these iron plates and putting them in here and getting steel plates out so i kind of doubt whether this is worth it because you now you need to mess around with getting oxygen in here so i think that's a bit of a shame that there is no productivity increase from this step to this step because i would definitely in this case just say well build more iron and then have some of the iron split over and just make it into uh, steel in the regular fashion so at this point we now know the process the steps of the process the other part that is really important is actually to understand the ratios between each of these machines and also uh, um, the timing of them. So let's have a look. This one is running on a four second cycle. This one is also running on a four second cycle. This is again running on a four second cycle. That's pretty good. This one is however running on a two second cycle. And that's one as well, a two second cycle. So basically at this point, let's start by looking at this one. So this one generates one processed ore every two seconds, okay? But every two seconds, this needs two processed iron ore. So we definitely need two of the processing machines for every one pellet press, okay? Well, let's say we have one pellet press that generates 12 iron pellets every two seconds. But remember, this is on a four second cycle. So this is gonna run two cycles and that means it will output 24 iron pellets and in order for this, this is consuming four iron pellets every four seconds, and we need to consume 24, because that's what this generates on a four second cycle. And then we need six of these. Okay, so we have two ore pressing, one pellet press, and six blast furnaces. Well, that's important to note. Well, if we have four of these, or six of these, sorry, then they each on a four second cycle, generates five each we will now have enough four second cycle for all of them we'll have 30 output okay so this one will need to consume 30 iron ingots every cycle that means i need 10 of these okay so more of them and they will again output 30 as well so this one needs to, to consume uh, 30 molten iron every cycle that means i need 15 or 16 if i want to make it symmetrical so you can see here, even though this process looks, yes, thank you, Autosave, this process looks quite smooth that it runs through, there's actually a huge gap because com this one compared to, I mean, the, the pellet press compared to the casting machine is a huge gap between them. Uh, the casting machine, you would need 16 of these to keep up with that, which is a problem. So let's, uh, let's go over to the machine we looked at in the beginning and see how this is performing. I started by seeding it with 200 or 2000 and let's let's zoom in close because this is a bit complicated. I want to explain exactly what's going on here. This is pretty simple. We have coke and we have iron ore coming out of our big storage facility. It goes in here to one this the iron ore goes into one processing facility and another processing facility. So that's the two processing facilities needed. They are then feeding here and here into the pellet press. So this is where we have the two ore processing for every one pellet press. Now the next part is the most difficult part because this one pellet press has to service six of the blast furnaces. Assuming of course they are the same marks. The fact that this one is crafting speed 0.75 doesn't really matter because everything is now 0.75. So I can ignore it. They're all gonna be slowed down by 25% compared to the actual numbers. So this one, 
the way I have figured out to do it is actually by using Bob's inserters. I recommend them highly, but since you are playing Bob's mods in uh, in order to do this, otherwise there's, uh, there's really no point. I, I mean, Angel's mod goes in and in with Bob's mod. There's there's not just not no two ways about it. So you, I've made these inserters like this, picking up and, and outputting here. So they are now being fed here. What I've also, what is also important is that these blast furnaces require some something to burn, and I've just decided they can just as well use the coke that's coming in anyway, because the coke is needed for. No, it's not actually needed for anything else. So here we are just picking it up. You can see these ones are oops, slightly twisted just so there's room because it's kind of hard to get room for it, and also the power boards as well. Now those are the six blast furnaces needed to uh, to keep up with the pellet press and then let's move on to the next tier. So remember that each six blast furnaces needed 10 of the induction furnace to uh, to yeah, to match in speed. That means for each three, we need six on each five, great. We need five over here and that's what we're having. One, two, three, four, five. I am splitting it on an inserter perspective of this one is feeding the top one, the middle one. The middle one here is feeding the second from the top and the middle and the lower one and this one feeding those two and it actually works quite well now this one these induction engines are actually uh, outputting some molten iron which means it goes into a, a pipe i chose to use the orange pipe because it fits with the color theme of everything here and then we have on each side eight different eight of these you can see they're basically all active at any given time this should be active to the point where it's seven and a half that's running. You can see now our production facility is gone. So let's go back and see the other ones just to check up on how the ratios performed. Here we put 200 in and we got 200 out. This is what you would expect normally. At this level, we put 200 in and we basically got 250 out. There's something stuck somewhere you can see here. That looks pretty good. So that was the 50% or the 25% yield. Here we should have 50% yield and we also have that that was finishing exactly as we get head up here. This is very, very well timed. Let's see if that also fits over here. No, not quite. But this one is empty, empty, not empty. This is still running for a long time. This one also has to go way up. But this is exactly the, the issue you can see here. The Prelude Press is so much faster. So we've consumed everything, but this is the one that just waits for everything downstream. You can see lots and lots of, of storage here because this one is the, then the bottleneck i mean i'd need 16 of of the casting engines just to keep up with this one so we won't be able to see anything here however let's look at the steel in the same process running through it let's see and how much steel do we have we have this corresponds quite well to 94 percent with maybe a bit of lag somewhere yeah here we got a bit of lag or a bit of a uh, of loss somewhere so that's pretty good. Let's have a look at this space. Uh, we put 2000 in and we would expect to get around uh, 3600, maybe 3700 out. We got 3.7K out. So this is pretty good. We put uh, 2000 in and got 3.7K out. And this one is now running idle. Of course, there's a bit stuck somewhere in the, at the various steps. So that really concludes uh, my view on the smelting, out, um, smelting mod it is one of those things where i mean you build this once and then you just stamp it down with power with power plants but it there are times when especially when playing with boss mods that, it, that there is an easier way let's for example take the gold that's a hell of a lot of steps but maybe gold is not something you're limited on so it might just be easier just to take this one just gold or chlorine gas is it really needed to build this huge part just to get just to get but to get 87 percent additional yield I don't think so but for iron and copper i definitely believe it for steel i do not believe it because there is no point in diff no difference in point whether doing this process requiring oxygen input or the normal process and just uh, converting it afterwards maybe for uh, tin and lead as well it could be worth it let's have a look at it uh, it could also be worth it to do it for the really rare ones let's have a look at it like uh, tungsten or titanium because this is about squeezing out every single additional but i mean i would never do it for zinc or nickel as you don't really need any of it 
that's just uh, my take on this. I very much enjoyed this mod. I also very much like the color scheme, the thematics. This is very much like heavy industry, that orange rusty color. Love it very much. This is another brilliant uh, brilliant mod from uh, from Angel and it's uh, it fits very well into the whole uh, scheme. So I hope this was uh, useful for you, this overview, uh, getting an idea about the uh, the improvements in yield as well as also the ratios of the machines to each other to build a nice overview that uh, it, it's quite compact and it works really well it's very well balanced it doesn't generate much it doesn't saturate this at all I mean not even two of these squares here would saturate a red belt but that's just the way it is um, it takes a lot of space but since the map is infinite by infinite who cares right and it's beautiful to have a, a nice big factory in any case, uh, thank you very much for joining. If you like it, then leave a like and or, and or a comment below. So I hope you appreciate it and I'll see you in one of the future tutorials. Cheers. Bye.